There are many reasons to push for enhanced security, but very few evoke emotion like this. I'm here with Weston Hecker from Rapid7, who just demonstrated a hack of a next-gen ATM machine. Weston, these next-gen machines are all over Europe, but many, very few have made it to the United States. Yeah. What have you found in terms of vulnerability? Um, well, uh, some of the active relaying of some of the messaging, um, it, that's, there's vulnerabilities that are that come up from actual the limitations in the actual communication networks in the United States. And um, they have to be able to access on some of the smaller networks, like where they don't have the ability to get some, to some of the levels of security that the bigger networks have. So that's one of the things is some of the smaller ones are holding the big ones behind. So, yeah. in, in the demonstration, you showed the use of not a skimmer, which we are all accustomed to. We'll, oh, yeah. we'll have several of them on demonstration at DEF CON. Oh, yeah. But this one is a, a shimmer. And it, it's designed to, to take the data from the, the new chip and pin, or actually in the United States, the pin cards. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, so basically that gets in between the actual contacts. And uh, there's several um, point of sale attacks that have been done in the wild in the, in the past. Um, people have done demonstrations on this. There's lots of good research on it. Uh, but uh, this one was a... Uh, I wonder why nobody went after ATM machines, and I actually went and looked at the attack surface of the actual ATMs and uh, discovered some things that were specific to some of the ATM protocols. So, so yeah, that's kind of the, the direction that I went with it. And, yeah, so. and uh, the, in layman's term, the demonstration essentially showed the use of a, of a shimmer inside yeah. of a card machine. So someone would put their card in, do a regular transaction, say yeah. at Home Depot or Target, yeah. which have adopted the, uh, the pin, the, uh, not the pin, but the chips uh, side of the card, yeah. and then you would replay that at an actual ATM machine, and you, you've created a device mm -hmm. that can, can do the, the pin entry if necessary, and yeah. uh, then it just spat out money. Yeah. Tell me, how difficult would this be to correct? Because I know you're not releasing your source code, you're not yeah, really yeah. showing people your device because this is dangerous, <laughs> but can it be fixed, or do we have to wait for the next next gen ATM. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was actually going through some of the research, even being like a hobbyist in this kind of thing, it was something where I came up with like three pretty good ideas or solid directions that I would go with. You know, and I, I think that, you know, people that do this for a living, they're definitely going to come across that kind of stuff, especially when these things are brought up a couple of years before it's actually used out in the wild. So, you know, some of the actual, uh, trend, like the shimmers that have been found in the wild, those ones have been used on improper EMV implementations. Like they'll actually make them into, you know, a card, a physical card. So, yeah, so some of those attacks that have been used in the wild are a little bit different. So it's, it's you know, as soon as that low-hanging fruit goes away, this is kind of where the bad guys are going to go. So. And, and you even mentioned that you did find a few devices in the wild that, that had serial numbers. So obviously oh, yeah. these, these are not one-off devices. These are being professionally produced. Yeah, I, I forgot where the actual article was. I, I, I read it. It was um, they actually, uh, so, some of the shimmers that they'd come across, they looked like they were actually from the same lot numbers and same batches, which means that they're, you know, that's an indication of some kind of fabrication in a professional factory. So that's what the extent that the bad guys are going to. You know, they have a... You know, engineering backgrounds, they have the technical skills, as you saw with some of the malware stuff that's going on now. It's all professionally made now. So, yeah. well, We're just going to go ahead and throw them straight into the presentation that we recorded. But before that, if they wanted to find out more about Rapid7, more about the research that you've been doing, or more about uh, the vulnerabilities that you found, where can they go? Oh, yeah, just hit us up on rapid7.com. So, yeah, we got tons of information there. We got really good uh, learning. If you want to, you know, just catch up on some of the, you know, the latest computer skills, it's a really, really good site. And, you know, a lot of our employees... Uh, contribute a lot to it. So, yeah, it's not like anything that uh, I've ever found on the internet as far as, you know, the straightaway, straightaway training. So, it's very good stuff. So, We've been speaking with Weston Hecker from Rapid7, who's here to make it rain. EMV um, it stands for Euro MasterCard Visa, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this is going to be a long talk about EMV. It's not. Um, so EMV is the chip card standard that's coming to the U.S. Hooray, U.S. We are finally catching up to the rest of the world. Um, and the idea is, is that it uh, phases out mag strips. Um, and so mag stripe cards uh, have been the standard in the U.S. for a million years, or 50. And uh, the Carter gangs and the criminal activity around mag stripe cards is pretty well established. Uh, if I'm running a Carter organization, my goal is to um, you know, steal mag stripe data, bundle that up, sell it on the dark web, uh, and let somebody else deal with all the cash out, right? 
Um, well, with the move to EMV, this kind of bundling and selling much later doesn't really work anymore. Uh, EMV transactions are super time sensitive. So instead of stealing EMV uh, data and trying to sell it at a later date, um, as, as a criminal attacker, I would need to be able to uh, monetize this in much closer to real time. Um, now, EMV is definitely more secure than Magstripe, uh, but it is not a case where we're going to move to uh, chip and pin and the criminals are going to throw up their hands and say like, oh, no, I'm done, I'm out, I can't do Magstripe anymore. Absolutely not. Uh, what Weston has found um, through uh, looking around at, at kind of like what the attack surface is looking like on EMV, as you've probably heard at every black hat over the last five years, <laughs> um, the criminals are definitely moving there. Um, and so uh, we have now a scenario where uh, a criminal organization can insert not a skimmer for a magstripe, but a shimmer in a device much like this, a POS system uh, that we're all familiar with. You just kind of drop it in there. Inside such a POS would be a, a shimmer that sits in between the card and the point of sale system. That shimmer is, a, is in fact itself a computer. Um, it is connected to the internet. Um, it modulates uh, the electrical impulses from the EMV chip, shoots them over the internet to a device such as this one, um, and then those get replayed back out into a, uh, a card that is capable of a receiving this data and also um, is capable of like impersonating the EMV data um, you know, that the unsuspecting victim has now supplied in the chip and pin device. So, as you know, um, if you've tried to use chip and pin lately, um, sometimes it takes uh, apparently forever, really more like 15, 20 seconds, and it's that kind of like time lag that um, the attack takes, his, it takes advantage of. This card is sitting there, um, apparently doing nothing, but in fact it's being, getting controlled by uh, the ATM on the other side. So, so let's go. Let's go over um, like each individual component that's that's behind here. Because as you can see, it's got this attractive out of order sign. Uh, you can't actually see any of the electronics that have been laid in underneath. It's just like kind of the point, right? Like this is one style of attack. Weston went through, um, you know, the handheld device um, where you know the someone who is running the cash out would walk up to any ATM and and do that. Uh, this is a more uh, permanent solution. This would last, you know, maybe overnight or a day or two before the like owner notices that someone has put their ATM into an out of order state. So maybe let's go through like. So I have this this blockchain of of EMV transaction data that's very time sensitive. So what what happens next? Like you have the Android phone. Let's let's start with Android and just kind of go through that. Yeah. So basically, after they come on over here. So after they've entered their information onto their web page, it'll give a lot of information where you can watch the blockchain for those specific events that you actually... Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah so this thing will actually, uh, the phone will actually look for uh, its specific events and delimiting characters that it actually set when it purchased the transaction. So it's something it'll look for those specific figures and then know that that's, uh, it's time to start grabbing that transaction data. And it'll actually connect directly to the SHIM device. So it's a, a direct connection from the SHIM device to the actual... Uh, uh, point of sale to, or the, to the ATM machine that is doing the cashing out, and it'll actually uh, the initial communication between the EMV chip is uh, actually uh, not on the point of sale terminal. It'll actually be passed off uh, to the ATM's uh, information. So, is that, well, let's just kick it up. Yeah, definitely. So, so while well, Weston plugs in a thing. Um, <laughs> which is a technical term. Uh, imagine then, like, like I said, that there is this cloud of, of EMV data uh, along with pin information, which is all you know, captured by the man in the middle device. And so now the ATM or the Android phone that's sitting underneath here um, is, is catching that data. It's transmitting it to an EMV kind of replicator card um, where that EMV device that's actually kind of parked in the, uh, in the slot is is simulating the the real EMV chip that's somewhere else on the point of sale system, um, and then there's also uh, a couple of microcontrollers in there that's controlling some servos that are actually punching the buttons on the on the pin pad, and so it's picking up uh, pin data. Um, it's selecting how much cash to withdraw. This is all, by the way, like mediated by the kind of fraud flags that are transmitted along with the EMV. Device, EMV. Um, 
and then it's just going to start spitting out cash uh, as each transaction kind of gets flagged by uh, the software running on the Android device. Uh, and then just kind of keeps going, apparently forever. <laughs> um, in reality, uh, if this were like a, a organized uh, crime kind of situation, um, you know, the, whoever's running the cash out, they would have like a block of time, say, or they're part of like the whole shimming operation. So uh, I think uh, with that, let's just get out of the way. And uh, I think uh, this will just keep going um, until... Either it runs out of cash, <laughs> or um, the fraud uh, alert systems that are actually all still running, and it's very real, uh, uh, finally alerts that this ATM is behaving oddly.